And there he is. What's, what's going on, man? Pappy Land. All right, so you got to tell me. I have not read Pappy Land. What is Pappy Land? Well, Drew, it's about all your th- favorite things there, uh, Berno. Uh, about whiskey. Okay. And then, some, and then you don't really need to know. Uh, it's, just, it's just about whiskey. It's about uh, the, well. The, look, I have had a bunch of a bunch of guys I know, and I'm sure we're around the same age. A lot of guys got into like finding these, collecting these, these Pappy Van Winkle bottles, right? It became very, very rare, very difficult to get a hold of, right? So I guess you wanted to go find the story about this thing. Yeah. So the, the guy who got in, and uh, I basically spent three years following him around. And it's, uh, you know, part of it's the story of how this came to be so sought after. And then, uh, you know, the other half of it, are the thing, it's things we've talked about all the time on this show. It's sort of a, you know, meditation on family and home. And, you know, a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about at the at the rendezvous tonight. Uh, uh, you know, basically, I have a four-year-old and a one-year-old. I had to invent this event just to have a night out. <laughs> Honestly, you could come if you want to, uh, <laughs> but like, this is an elaborate setup. I could just go eat some damn bread. <laughs> You're gonna be at the Rendezvous tonight, uh, and it's presented by the Rendezvous and Novels. So you got a bookstore involved too. Well, I know, man. We're uh, they're gonna they're gonna be selling copies of Pappy Land and the Cost of These Dreams. So if you want to come and eat some ribs, you can do your Father's Day shopping. Uh, it's actually like it's a pretty great deal. I mean, I'm gonna hurt Mr. Burgess. I mean, forty five dollars, all the sausage and cheese I can eat, all the beer I can drink, all the ribs I can eat. I mean, I don't know what their profit margins of the year are, but we're gonna try to break it tonight. All right, so uh, obviously the the book is done extremely well. But what are you most so, what are, what are you most proud of regarding Pappy Land? You know that that people seem to get it. It's weird. You put a book out in the world, and you know it. The night before it comes out, you're really nervous because you're like, well, I think this is good, but what if everybody hates it, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, I sort of felt like, you know, people who are my age uh, thinking about their relationship with their own parents and uh, and also their kids, I thought it would strike a nerve. You know, uh, the first time I described it to my wife, I you know, laid out my grand literary theory of what I thought I'd done and instead of smiled and said, oh, you wrote Eat, Pray, Love for Dads. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, uh, that's, I mean, she's sort of right as much as I hated it at the time. I mean, it, 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 you know, it, it is sort of a meditation on fatherhood, uh, being a son and a father. So I was happy that people got that, that they got that it's a fun story about whiskey that, that we all love, but there's something else going on, and it was gratifying. Got well, that. And you have always touched the nerve on the father-son stuff. Like, that has been a big part of what you have written. It, you remember, I told you, I don't, I don't even, I, I, there's not many books I read. I, uh, Roser, I went on a vacation one time, and I was in, I, I, I remember where I was. I was in uh, Clearwater, Florida, and I was out at the thing, and I was reading Wright's book, like the collection of his stories. And I read his, in, the, in that book, I'm just like moping along, reading the book, right? Um, it's an article. What is the name of the article? The one about your dad and the masters. Oh, yeah. Holy ground. I'm not, Jesus yeah, Christ. No. I am bawling my <laughs> eyes out at a pool. <laughs> at, I am sitting by a pool in Clearwater, Florida. And I am, I mean, I can't stop crying. But, but you know, the, the writer Dan Jenkins had uh, 10 stages of drunkenness. And number six was crying about your daddy. So I... It, it, I've been ruining vacations for a very, Dude. very proud. Oh, it was the worst. I mean, I am bawling. <laughs> and my wife's like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, forget it. <laughs> you wouldn't understand. It's his, dad. it's his dad at the Masters. This is bullshit. And I texted him. And I'm like, you know, this is real horse shit, bro. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm crying my eyes out at a pool. What's that? Hashtag. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, so now you're going to be at the Rendezvous tonight. Rendezvous and novel. All right, so now I, now I get to pitch you our story, okay? All right, let's do it. So you've done all these stories. You've done Luis Suarez. Which is great. We love Luis Suarez. We love Jordan. Tiger. We love Tiger. A lot of it always. And a lot of those have, like, gone back to dad, family, upbringing, kind of how we got to this point. And so... 
One of the things that we've wondered, first of all, is there something that you are like working on? Is there like the big long form Wright Thompson that's going to be coming out in the coming weeks or months? And then I'm going to look stupid because, hey, why didn't you ask him about that? Well, I got a couple of things. I got a document. Oh, shoot. I'm losing you. It's breaking up. Who is a document on who? Ukraine soccer team. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Yeah, God. yeah, yeah. You went and, over there? Yeah, so I just got back from uh, yesterday. You just got back from Kiev yesterday? Yeah. Aren't they getting bombed like every day? Yeah, it's not great. It's not, not great. Uh, what are you doing? I, you know, making some terrible decisions in hindsight. Uh, <laughs> you got a four-year-old and a one-year-old. What is wrong with you? Look, let me just tell you, a cruise missile sounds way better than a four-year-old tantrum. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that like, might be the line of the year. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't, fire away, buddy. Like, we just, you got nothing. But, you know. So, oh, hold on now. Man. Were you really, like, was it, what is it like being there? You know, it was weird. So, we, we were there for when they played Scotland last Wednesday, and it takes a while to get out. So, we started leaving Kiev on Thursday and all those missiles started falling Sunday. So we actually were fine. We left four days before it got bad. Uh, in hindsight, we probably should have been more careful. Uh, there were like air raid sirens going off. And everybody said, we haven't been hit in a month. It's fine. So I sort of thought, well, okay, it's fine. So it, it's a city. It's wild. Like what? They're, just getting, they're just getting on with it, man. Like, you know, you still call up and got to make dinner reservations. You still got to deal with snotty mater d's at these hipster restaurants like we don't have anything until 10 30 sir you know i mean they're tax you can get a taxi you know in many ways it's a functioning normal city what it's crazy it's totally crazy wait this is not what i see on the news no it's both that's what's nuts is that about eight miles north of kiev and about eight miles south of kiev you can see where they stop the russians and they're just burned out Russian tanks everywhere. And north of the city, this guy walks us into this field and points at a hole. And we're like, what is that? And he's like, well, that's a mass grave. I mean, Jesus. So, like, north and south of the city is really messed up. Down in the east, sort of Don the Donbass region, uh, they're, you know, they're fighting. It's crazy, dude. They're fighting in, like, trenches. It's, like, closer to Gettysburg than it is to Baghdad. I mean, this is, like, medieval stuff going on out there. And, uh, what? but Eve, the city, you know, they push the Russians out. And so they keep, you know, their missile strikes and they get bombed, but there are no Russian troops anymore surrounding the city. So, like, you can walk out of your hotel and get a taxi. It's crazy. And go to dinner. And go to dinner. No, we went to, di like, we went to dinner. Dinner was lovely. Went to this really great Crimean restaurant. I didn't even know that that was a thing. And nobody, you know? and, and everybody's acting like nothing's going on, like they're not under attack. No, like the, the, the air raid sirens go off and everybody just sort of does this. And then just goes back to what they were doing. Yeah, that ain't like, for me. No, like people get used to everything. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of when I went down to Texas during the pandemic. <laughs> and I was like, there's no pandemic going on down here. No, no, like, there, like, there was, I, I went into Cowboy Stadium. There's 70,000 people in there. Not one no, person in a mask, nothing. I'm like, this is wild. No, it's, yeah, it's unbelievable. Like, you bastard, this is like a Petri dish. Yeah. You know, you, like, I went to Fort Morgan, Alabama and during the pandemic. <laughs> And I was just like, yeah. boy, they, word has not traveled here that there is a pandemic. <laughs> it's so funny you say that. I went to Fort Morgan, too. I went to Kiva Dunes, the, the golf course down there. We went down there and, and stayed in a house right there on the water. And there's, you know, there's that big sort of multi-story seafood restaurant. I can't think of the name of it. Yes. And we walked in there, and it's like 400-pound dudes coughing all over each other. <laughs> Dude. I was like, this, hey, no, this is look. This is not, this is like when the uh, height of the pandemic yeah, and we yeah. hey no we drove into Gulf Shores and there was like 50,000 people at like the go-kart place you know there's like a go-karts and the family fun thing and my kids are like can we go there I'm like hell no I'm like you want to stand in that line to get covid cuz like this is wild and by the way some of those places you're like 
COVID's the best thing I'm going to get. <laughs> like, that's the best case scenario. But, like, you know, I, yeah, just like in the air, you feel your IQ drop. Man, you ain't lying. All right. So, a- anyways, this. So you got the you got the Ukrainian soccer team, and what's the yeah. other one? Uh, Joe Burrow. Oh, I like that one. Yeah. I like that one because he's got a super cool story. So you always end up going and doing these like mega deep dives. And so w- when we first started the show, we were talking. I was talking about you coming on. And it was like who? It, and Roser said, "Who would you want?" right to go like do the the deep dive like the whole full-on story who we got i'm looking man i'm always looking we came up with one guy in the nba in the nba we came up we want Kyrie. how is this dude like what happened here Kyrie irving like what happened here because he's got like you know you can go back and like maybe like two three years ago right he's got the there's that big pastor in Ohio, and he's like mega Christianity, and he like requests the trade because of him and all this stuff. And then we fast forward, and like two years later, he's like practicing Ramadan, and he's like burning the incense and all this stuff. And then he's not like, then he doesn't get vaccinated for the year. And then, but then like everybody I know that knows him says he's like totally cool. Like you want to hang out with the guy. And then like, his public persona is like this enigma or something, right? And it's like, you know, the earth is flat. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, he'd fit in great in Fort Worth. The, uh, I, wonder if, I wonder if he would be open to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, but how did we get, like, why? Because you know how you, like, remember when you did, like, when all the Tiger stuff came, there was so much that was traced back to the father. Right. Yeah. Like why I did the Navy SEALs thing, why he did this, why he acted this way. And then obviously Army Katan and those guys did the more on that HBO thing. Right. And they kind of pinned it all on dad and whatever. But like it's I, then these guys, even when I was talking about it, they were saying like mom passed away when he was like two or three or something. And grandma did, too, or something. So it's really like him and his dad to get like, this right up your alley, bro. There's something that. Say what? It, there's something interesting. It's a, like it's not really. Crazy. He's not crazy. No, he's he's not. He's like, actually like a smart dude. Yeah, no, he is. It, it, we, like we said, like we have mutual friends that like when he played for the Celtics or the Cavs, or whatever. Like he'd come in town and he'd like go over to like because he was buddies. He's buddies with Mike Miller, and Mike Miller obviously has Memphis ties. And like we know, we have friends, personal friends that have hung out with the guy. And they're like, dude, he could not be cooler. But he's like this Kanye figure now. Well, nobody, nobody. <laughs> I know, not that crazy. By the way, as a long-time proponent of uh, Jay Z, okay, I feel so like vindicated. Just, yeah, just. <laughs> well, certainly one's got a better head on his shoulders than the other. <laughs> There's no question. No, well, you know what? I, I took a lot, of- and I was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got. What, what's interesting about Joe Burrow? What is most interesting? You know, the thing that's most interesting to me about him right now is just hanging with a guy who is on the cusp of being sort of one of two things. You know, he is either going to be a, you know, very wealthy, very famous guy who was very good at his job, or he's going to sort of enter that rare cultural air of one of these guys who's the best ever. And, Pending, you know, one of the best ever, and so the road he takes, the process of taking now, and I find that really interesting. Did you find him to have a good head on his shoulders? Uh, hadn't seen him yet. Oh, so you, we're just, at, it's this is just just set up recently. So I'm going up to see Joe Burrow. Have you talked to the people around him yet? Yeah, he seems lovely. I've talked to his dad. His dad seems great. But so, but they agreed to it. They were cool. Yeah, yeah, everybody's cool. All right, so you got the Joe Burrow thing. Is the Ukrainian soccer team any good, by the way? I don't know anything about them. No, they're fine. I mean, they're better than they, they're better than they should be, considering. Uh, sorry, that's why. Let's, Let's go. Let's go. Is this four or is this one? That is four. You want to meet the four year old? Of course, I want to meet the four year old. What are we talking hey, about? Cruise missile hey, or four year old? Yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? She's not melting down yet. Hey, Wallace, come here. Hey, go. 
Hey, Wallace. <laughs> yeah, this is great. Hey, Wallace. Oh, you got a party going on over there. Wallace, do you want to come say hello to Chris? Come on. Come Wallace, come here. Come on, Wallace. Here come we say go. Say hi. Hey, Wallace, you want to say hello? <gasps> say hi. Hey. Oh, she, she, shot a, she already found a stuffed animal. She's out of here. Yeah, yeah, she's got lots. She's got more important things to do than talk about sport, guys. What, what do you think she thinks you do? She started asking questions, so she thinks I just go away and, like, do fun things without them. Which is sort of true. <laughs> which is sort of true. I mean, it's hard to explain. She thinks I do fun things without them. Well, you know, it's sort of hard to make the case that I'm going into a coal mine, you know. <laughs> this is, uh, so yeah, they're, they're, this will all be dealt with later at there. Don't worry. What did your wife say when you said, hey, honey, I'm going to go write about the Ukrainian soccer team, and I'm well, going to go over there in the middle of a friggin' war? I may not have neglected to mention that. Oh, <laughs> she thought you were in California? No, but she thought I was in Poland. Are you serious? Yeah. You did not tell her. No. Is that bad? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's your it's your, it's your own life. Was she well, mad I, in retrospect? Was she mad? No, she was just like, I knew you were going to do that, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what did you tell her you were going to Poland for? Well, th I was going to Poland because that was the uh, closest country to Ukraine. Oh. Uh. You know, and, and uh, I mean, I didn't lie. I just didn't tell the whole truth. <laughs> so did you go when you went to when you're in Ukraine? Did you when you were on the phone with her at that point? Do you tell her I'm in Poland or do uh, you tell her I'm in Ukraine? When I got to Ukraine, I told her I was in Ukraine. And but then, I just sort of better to look. I was going, man. I didn't want to have go 15 rounds about it. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough, right? I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't think I could get away with that one. I don't think. I, don't well, think I, I have, by huh? the way. Like, you know, th this, this story is, is uh, continuing in real time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, thus, why you're getting away tonight. You're coming to Memphis to be at the rendezvous. Yes. So, uh, man, like, we're at 45 bucks is a good deal. Come see us. Yeah. Uh, we're going to tell some funny stories, uh, talk some about the book. Uh, uh, Mr. Vargas and his daughter are going to get up. And we're going to talk about the rendezvous. And uh, we're just going to have a good time, man. And then uh, see where the night takes us in Memphis. Okay. Look, I know this. If you just type in on, you can Google Rendezvous Wright Thompson and it pops right up. The Eventbrite link pops yeah. right up. And so you could get tickets uh, right there online. It's through Eventbrite and it's 45 bucks and that includes your food, your drinks, your tax, your tip, and then obviously uh, Novel's going to be on site and they're going to have the books. So I'm sure you could personalize them to anybody. Uh, we'll sit there, sign, drink some beers, and we'll put barbecue sauce thumbprints on all of them. It'll be great. Nice. Hey, uh, one last thing. Are you still going to do, be doing the show for... Uh, SEC Network, is that still going to be going on? Yeah, we uh, just signed up for three more seasons. True South, uh, awesome. John T. the host. And so we're, yeah, man, we're, we're rolling along. We got three more seasons. I'm excited. Oh, that's awesome. Congrats on that for sure. And I'll look forward to that. When, when do you think, uh, when is the Ukraine soccer team thing? When is that? Like six months from now? or no, so, It'll so. be probably late October, early November. Oh, really? Okay, and then the Burrow thing during the season? Yeah, during the season. All right. You're not writing another book right now, are you? Uh, I am, I got a couple of things going on. I'm being vague on purpose. Oh. oh. All right, all right. Pappy Land 2. <laughs> back to Pappy Land. Hey, look, my, I'm just going to call it Back for More Cash. <laughs> He's back for more cash. Fair enough. Hey, as long as you can pump out New York Times bestsellers, you're doing all right, brother. Look, the, these kids are spinning it faster than I can make it. Yep, I understand. Night at the Rendezvous with Wright Thompson. He's going to be over there tonight, 6 to 8 tonight. My man, thank you, brother. Thanks, Bardo. All right, man. Wright Thompson.